we are all exposed. We all have these chemicals in our bodies and they are around us everywhere. I think we thought that it was contained. We now know that that's not the case. I'm Linda Birnbaum. I am the former director of the National Institutes of Environmental Health Sciences, which is part of the National Institutes of Health. PFAS is a huge class of industrial chemicals. They don't occur at all in nature, and we don't know how to get rid of them. PFAS is associated with a wide variety of health effects, including elevated cholesterol and effects on the liver, including several kinds of cancer, including effects on fertility, things like low birth weight, effects on the immune system, immune suppression. There are studies showing an increased risk of type 2 diabetes in people who are exposed to PFAS. Frankly, I'm not sure I can think of a tissue or an organ system in our bodies uh, which has not been reported to be associated with PFAS. Much of our food has PFAS contamination in it as well. Some of it is because of the fish swimming in contaminated waters or vegetables growing in contaminated soil. I'm going to tell you the bad news, which is these chemicals in our country are barely regulated. Other countries have regulated the use of PFAS while we have basically are just now proposing drinking water regulations. EPA, March 29th of this year, actually proposed maximum contaminant levels. This would be the first time at the federal level that we would have regulations. Now, none of these things have come about yet. And I know EPA is hoping to finalize the regs by the end of this year, it may slip into next year because they got huge numbers of comments. I can't spend all my time worrying about what I can't control, but I can try to control certain things. So I can try to be sure that my drinking water is not contaminated. I can try not to buy things that say completely water repellent, completely stain resistant. You can filter these chemicals out of your drinking water. There's something called GAC or granular activated charcoal. That's what's in most refrigerator filters. I think the important thing is, is that you change them. <laughs> if they say six months, please change them before it gets to a year because Otherwise, the stuff can kind of back up and start then re-exposing you. So I think that is the easiest first approach. I recently moved, but that's one of the first things that my husband and I are going to do is put filtration into our refrigerator and possibly a filter um, under our sink because we have, um, I've been notified by our drinking water municipal system that my water exceeds the four parts per trillion level. Now, I should say that this charcoal filtration doesn't remove everything. There are certain PFAS which will leach through, but it's certainly a lot better than not doing anything. I'm not sure about Brita, how well that works, but I'm trying it right now until I can get the filtration in my system. So it's something we can do, but how much better, frankly, for the people who made these chemicals, for them to provide for the filtration of our municipal water systems and for the cleanups that we have to have. I think stopping production of PFAS is extremely important. We've really got to turn off the tap. I believe that the U.S. has lagged in comparison to other countries in regulating PFAS. Part of that has to do with our regulatory system, which is very cumbersome and very slow. Even once something is proposed, it can take years before it goes into effect. If we don't turn off the tap in the production and use of these chemicals, 
The levels in our environment will continue to increase. The levels in our bodies will continue to increase. And the adverse effects that have been reported and have been clearly shown will increase in the population. These exposures are going to and are already, in many cases, impacting our health.